recently, my younger sister and I were having a random conversation. So I popped up a question. I asked her, what did she want to be when she grew up? What was the dream job? And then she just looked up at me and said, I'm willing to do anything as long as it makes me a lot of money. She's just 10. And then she asked me how. I had no answer. After a few weeks of researching online and contacting some of my friends and teachers, I came to the conclusion and answer to a question. I found out that cryptocurrencies, real estate, fintech, and many more fields are the future of affluency. At that point, I came to the realization that I didn't know any of this until I researched about it or talked to someone about it. At least for me, that is. In a more deep and provoking thought, I had never learned anything of this sort in school. This realization hit me hard because a school is considered the main source of knowledge in the early years of a child. In the developing world of today, financial education and management is constantly neglected and is not the top priority. Whether you're a lawyer, doctor, or engineer, we all need the key financial skills in our lives to sustain our living. It's splashed across the news every other day. College students continue to struggle with massive debt. Even in a developed country like America, Forbes claimed that, according to a recent report, 44% of Americans cannot cover even a $400 emergency without going into debt. And an estimated of 56% of Americans have less than $10,000 in their savings for their retirement. According to a regional study, the average consumer debt in UAE has reached a whopping $114 billion in total. The world is currently $296 trillion in debt, with over 2 million people suffering with the disease of not saving or investing properly. Why? The reason? They were never told what to do with the money that they earn. They were never told how to manage their income. A 2017 Rowe Price survey stated that 69% of parents are reluctant about broaching the topic of finances or money management with their children. This just emphasizes the point that financial literacy is extremely vital. So I question myself, and I question the education systems all around the world that claim to prepare students for the difficulties of life, yet they don't consider the basic building blocks of livelihood. In our generation, it's common to get answers from a 10-year-old about making a lot of money. It's no one's fault. It's just the effect of the overwhelming lifestyles that they're surrounded with. There are hundreds of ways that people can earn a living and not just satisfy their needs, but also meet their wants. I'm no financial expert, but I can give you a 15-year-old's perspective on how this era you, you use money. Ever wondered how we were introduced to this concept of money? For most of us, it was pocket money. How many of you here were given pocket money or allowances as a young kid? Most of us, right? If we consider dollars, we would be given 10 to $20 a month. Close enough? Now let's rewind and reminisce about how we actually spend that money that we so proudly used to say we earn from our sweat and tears. So commonly, people would either spend it on food or clothing within the first 24 hours of holding the money. A handful actually save up their allowance so that they can buy that one item that they've been wanting so badly. So the moral or point here is that we all spend according to our wants, needs, and desires. All this comes under the term money management, which is a skill that majority of us lack. Now let's talk about the source of this money that we earn. Of course, we're given the money for a good or service that we provide. We can only wish that money was free but the process has changed. The way of generating money has evolved. From a kid who used to do chores and activities, to working on a full-time job, to sitting at home and making millions a month. But once again, where do we get the knowledge to learn how to handle or manage this money? Schools are nowhere close to including anything about investing, saving, or budgeting in the education system. But we know the importance of this knowledge. And thus, we need to persuade the world and any educational institute possible 
to incorporate information about finance and money management in their courses and subjects. For us, we're going to start right here and right now. I'm going to share with you all, after long hours of research and descriptions, some of the future financial process for reaching the million dollar mark in life. Let's start off with fintech companies. They're pretty popular now. Fintech is a combination of finance and technology. Several businesses such as personal capital are based in this industry and have generated millions of dollars in revenue. From mobile banking and insurance to cryptocurrency and investment apps. Fintech has a seemingly endless era of applications. I might lose some of you in my next point. Gaming is a rising star in the money-making field. Gaming enthusiasts have turned playing video games into a full-time job, earning millions of dollars before the age of 30. There are gamers all around the world who have perfected this money-making formula. Generally, there are two ways that gamers can earn a living. Esports and live streaming. Esports is simply competitive gaming. In 2017, esports generated $655 million globally. And by 2022, it's on the world job generating $1.6 billion. On the other hand, live streams can gain up to $2 million a month. The next one is on a higher scale, but it's one of those that guarantees success. I'm talking about properties and real estate. Just like cryptocurrency, it involves investing. In 2015, an entrepreneur named Sahil Mehta sold his very first property in the Berkeley Caliph area at the age of 18. This earned him a commission of around $2,000. This solidified his interest in pursuing real estate sales and investments, which has only grown in the ensuring years. Now, at the age of just 25, Sahil co-owns five properties along with his older brother, worth around $9.4 million. But the fact is that it's not just Sahil. Millions of people have benefited from this investment. So for all the teens and youngsters out there, real estate is certainly a golden opportunity. Have you heard of side hustles? They're also known as passive income. It is such a topic that a number of books have been written on it. They're basically other tasks or activities for some extra cash. This can be filling out surveys and questions for websites. For some, investing in real estate and cryptocurrency is a side hustle. The main aim here is to generate income without any actual active involvement. By investing some of that earned income and creating sources of passive income, you may be able to increase your financial earnings and also improve your financial security. The list is endless. There are hundreds of fields that people may be interested in and that can gain them a ton of cash. The thoughts that I've shared today are not even on the primary level of the possibility of spreading financial education and guidance worldwide and making it a better place. The basics of budgeting, which simply includes creating and maintaining a budget plan, is one of the best ways of being on top of your finances. It allows you to understand the circulation of your money, your daily, monthly, or yearly spendings, and identify your exp expenses, such as your taxes, rents, and the list goes on. We have finally hit on the requirements that really matter, said Nan Morrison, CEO of the Council of Economic Education. They matter because they help students make better financial decisions. The number one problem in today's generation and economy is the lack of financial literacy. A bold claim by Alan Greenspan in 1926. Yet, where have we reached today? Even after 96 years, only 33% of adults are financially literate. This means that around 3.5 billion adults globally most of them in developing economies, lack the understanding of basic financial concepts. Let's be honest, we all hate math, but we love counting money. Money and finance are on the verge of dramatic transformations that will reshape their roles in the lives of ordinary people. We don't know what the future may hold for the generation of our little ones, but we need to start teaching, or rather, start investing in the ideas that prosper in the minds of today. So this conversation we just had is a signal, a wake-up call for all schools, educational institutes, students, teens, parents, everyone around the world, that we need to focus on exposing teens to finance and more crucial aspects of life. It's for their sake. It's for their financial freedom. 
I want to live in a financially literate society. I want everyone to understand the importance of saving and investing. I want every country to have a financially literate population. It's crucial that people understand the importance of this knowledge because it's actually life-saving. All this for a bolder, better, stronger future. As John Hope Bryan said himself, when we lose wealth in our own inner communities, it's not just a mere conspiracy. It's often the lack of our own financial literacy. Thank you.